Icom IC7100. Um, it's my radio. Full reported to myself is that I noticed the other day that um, it's not holding the real time um, or the date. Um, I set them, um, turned the radio off, came back a um, couple of hours later, turned it on. This is unpowered and they'd set to zero, zero, zero again. Um, so I've done a bit of quick googling and apparently there's a 3 volt lithium rechargeable cell that controls the real time clock. There's also a 5.5 supercapacitor. Um, I'm not too worried about that at the moment but more worried about just looking at uh, getting the uh, real time clock up and going so what I'm going to do I'm going to open it all up uh, have a look inside and see if we can find the battery um, I have bought some replacement batteries but they're not a direct equivalent uh, but they're not far off so um, I'll see if they fit if they fit then we'll fit one to get to it I need to remove the covers I've removed the top cover I removed the bottom cover, uh, simply removing screws, and then just removed the front plate. Uh, it's just held on by four little clicks there. Click on clicks. Um, then what we need to do is actually on the top of the board, um, there are numerous, easily identifiable, little screws. Um, I've taken them all out just to speed things up. Uh, but effectively they've got a ground plane around them and they look like that and there is a total of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, about 13 uh, scattered around the board um, then what we need to do is on the side of the unit there is um, an RF connection just pull that off that will then, you don't need to remove the ribbons that will then allow you access just by simply lifting and pulling backwards and then we can literally just excuse me flip the whole thing over and if we place it down as such um, here are the components we're interested in just here on the board uh, this is a uh, super capacitor I think they're called 5 volt rated um, but this tiny little cell here is just purely for the real time clock. Unfortunately, I come in their wisdom decided to solder it to the board. Um, so we'll have to look at a replacement for that um, and see what we can do. Uh, be it uh, their recommended or something that's uh, similar. Um, I'll see what I've got on the shelf. Uh, but that's what we've got to get off. I think it's going to take some hot air. We'll check the voltage on it obviously before we start. Just Okay, so there's the battery there, so um, let's just give it a quick test, we'll find a ground point. Uh, we'll try this point here first. And we're showing 0.374 of a volt, let's just try a different grounding point. So it's about the same, so yep, it's definitely duff, so I'm going to have to change that. Okay, well I hope you can see that, that's the, uh, the cell we need to replace. Um, this one here. And I will check this super capacitor, whatever it's called, it's rated at 5.5 volts. But at the moment, I'm primarily interested in just replacing that uh, the real time clock battery. Okay, we've got the battery off. I ended up using the hot air gun for it. Um, it's going to be very awkward if you haven't got one, but um, I'll show you what the pads look like once it's off. Let's have a quick look for you. Zoom in. Okay, there's the cell, and there's your two pads. A few little components around it, so you do need to be look, a little bit cautious. That's as close as I can zoom in. Um, but effectively, um, this is the cell, um, and this is your negative pad, and this is your positive pad over there. So we'll just get a replacement um, and get that soldered in um, and hopefully that should fix the problem. Um, it did take quite a bit of warming up to get it off uh, but we've got it off anyway so let's get something in um, and give it a try. Okay I've uh, soldered in a new battery. I've actually fitted uh, an MS621FE 
uh, which is rated at 5.5 milliamp hour capacity and is slightly a bit bigger than the original battery was only rated at 2.5 milliamp hour. Uh, they're both 3.3 sorry 3 volt lithium rechargeables. Um, but this is basically how it looks. So I've just put this. Um, I've just put two little, uh, a little bit of black tape underneath the bottom of it, um, and there's two solder lugs which I've just soldered to the original terminals. Um, oh, that seems to work all right. It's not the prettiest, but um, it seems to work. I've soldered uh, the two terminals that come with it across the original pads. Um, put it back together now and see if it's holding its uh, real-time clock um, uh, timings. Uh, right, we've put it all back together. Um, well, just as a tip, um, it's easier to disconnect this lead, this RF lead, from the other side of the board. Um, when I reconnected it, it was quite hard to get the board back in, so I disconnected it, and it slides in quite easy then. Um, I'd suggest that you put the screws back in one at a time, there's 12 in total, uh, it's quite easy to miss one. Um, but to be honest, I mean, this repair isn't quite straightforward as most. Um, unless you've got the right equipment, I probably wouldn't attempt it to be honest because you could end up damaging the board. Um, and the only way I could see getting that battery off without damaging the board was with a hot air gun. So unless you've got one, um, I'd, I'd give it a second thoughts about um, using a soldering iron. Hopefully the cell I'll put in there should last some time anyway, so we'll give it a try. 24 hours later, the time and the date are being kept. Uh, so I would say that fix is complete. Um, I will put the data sheet for the original battery and uh, the battery I used as a replacement. Um, but it's a simple enough job if you've got the right tools as usual. So um, obviously try this at your own risk but um, it's not one of the uh, easiest battery changes I've ever done. Why Icon went that way I do not know. Uh, why they couldn't have used a coin cell holder, I do not know. But they did what they did, 